Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm doing my top 10 favourite houseplants in no particular order. And as most of you know, I always do change my mind of what plants are my favourite. But as of now, I'm going to show you my favourites. You've probably guessed my first one already, seeing as it's staring me right in the face here. It is my beautiful Caladium Red Flash. I'm actually really surprised that it's still even here, seeing as it's almost mid-November. These are meant to be dormant. It's still doing quite well. The largest leaf came off, and this one here is starting to look a little bit droopy. But it's still got a few leaves. Obviously no new leaves will be growing now. They'll just start one by one, drooping, going yellow and then falling off and then eventually I'm going to have to cut it right down to soil level and then I will be digging up the bulb. I did film a Caladium Care Tips video for anyone interested which I'll link below. But I just love this plant so much. So beautiful. It's a real showstopper. You can't miss it. Depending on which variety of caladium you have, some of them are quite sensitive to direct sunlight. I found this one actually quite tolerant of direct sun, and this is a sunny east facing window. But the caladiums with the more translucent leaves will be a bit more sensitive to direct sunlight, so that's something to bear in mind. But have a look at my Caladium Care Tips video for more details and also how to look after them over winter. Next on my list we have the gorgeous Anthurium clarinervium. This is really easy to care for. I just love the kind of leathery feel to the leaves. I love the shape of the leaves. Their leaves remind me of cute little faces. Does anyone else feel like that about some of their plants, that the leaves look like faces, or is it just me? This one hasn't really grown too much since I've had it. I'm trying to think. This was the one that I didn't put in my terrarium, so it hasn't really done a whole lot. Although this leaf has grown quite large, it was much smaller when I first got it. These guys like bright indirect light, and they can tolerate a little bit of sun. As I said, this is a sunny windowsill and they seem quite happy here. If the leaves start to kind of fold down the way like this, like they're looking down, that can indicate that they are getting too much sun. My Alocasia cupria actually did that, so I had to move it to a bit of a, a darker spot. The next plant I wanted to show you is actually inside my BioBear terrarium, so I'm going to open the lid and get in close and show you from the top. This is my Dacinia marmorata, which is a type of jewel orchid. And as you can see, it is still flowering. It's produced this huge flower spike. The last time I measured it, it was over 30 centimeters long. It's massive. And I can't believe that it's actually still flowering. I feel like it's been flowering for months almost. The flowers are really cute. When I first got this jewel orchid, I did read that it is quite a difficult one to grow. But so far, fingers crossed, it's been really easy to care for. It's obviously been loving it in the bio terrarium with the high humidity, as it does automatically mist every now and again. Apparently these guys don't like sitting in wet or soggy 
substrate so I make sure that I don't overwater it. This terrarium does actually have a water tank so I do fill up the water tank a little bit which helps with the humidity and then I also spot water each plant um, depending on their requirements. This guy is actually wrapped in sphagnum moss and I kind of dug him a little hole. I'm quite intrigued to see where the new leaf is going to come from because with one of my other jewel orchids, if I can find it, it produced a flower spike and then once it had finished flowering, it started growing new leaves from the end of the flower spike. All right, let me, let me dig it out, here it is. Can you see that down there? So it's producing these tiny little leaves off the end of the flower spike. If anyone has any idea, let me know in the comments below because I'm quite interested to know what's going to happen here. I love these jewel orchids. The pattern on the leaves is unreal. It looks like lightning bolts. So cool. So there was another plant in here that I would have liked to have added to my list, but it's not doing amazingly at the moment, so I'm, I'm going to show you it anyway. Can you see it? The Begonia amphioxus there. This was doing really well, and then I decided to move it about four inches when I did my rescaping of the bile bear, and then it, it just threw a tantrum and it died and dropped all its leaves but what I did was I just popped the leaves into some sphagnum moss in here and it's actually started growing a brand new plant from one of the leaves. They are very easy to propagate so so yeah it's very tiny at the moment <laughs> but I just thought I'd show you it anyway. Next up, we have the awesome fishbone cactus, also known as rickrack, zigzag, orchid, I think, orchid cactus. There's quite a few names for it. I absolutely love this. I haven't had it very long. I just think it's so unique looking. It's very bizarre looking. I just put up this bracket for him so he can hang and hang out. <laughs> These guys originate from Mexico and they're usually found hanging down from the trees. They do produce flowers, which is really cool. And apparently the flowers um, arrive kind of autumn time, which is quite interesting. And I've heard that you're meant to give them some extra light during the autumn to help promote the flowering. If anyone knows anything about the flowering, please leave a comment as I really want this guy to flower and I haven't had this plant before so I appreciate any advice. This guy is hanging quite close to a bright west facing window so I'm hoping he's going to get enough light here. If not I can just move him closer to the window. And also these particular cacti do appreciate a humid environment. So a little bit different to normal cacti. Apparently they are related to the orchid, which is quite interesting. So they can be potted up in a orchid or cactus mix. Sorry about the lighting, by the way, it's so dark today. It's only the afternoon, but it's really kind of dark and dingy out there. The next plant on my list is the Begonia maculata whitei. I love this plant. It's so bizarre looking. I love the spots, I love the shape of the leaves. I love that the underside of the leaves is this lovely kind of maroon color. It's a really eye-catching plant. If anyone ever comes round, they always notice this plant straight away just because it's so bizarre looking. This is a new leaf here. This plant appreciates bright indirect light, although it can take some sun. Filtered sun's probably best and it loves high humidity. I keep moving this one around the house. It started off in the bathroom. Now it's in here, but it's not pet friendly. So I'm probably gonna end up moving it to the kitchen. My kitchen window is east facing, so it gets lots of bright light and a bit of sun throughout the day. So I think it will enjoy living on the kitchen window. 
here's another new leaf. I don't think the humidity is probably high enough in here. Next up, we have the Tradescantia Nanook. Look how beautiful it is. I love this plant. I love that even the tiniest bit of light through the window will shine through the leaves and then it makes them look like this lovely pink colour because the undersides are kind of a purpley pink. So pretty. I have heard these can be a bit of a pain in the ass to care for. So wish me luck. <laughs> they do like really bright light and sunshine. So if it's not quite bright enough for it here, I'm gonna move it into the kitchen because my kitchen does get sunlight throughout the day. I can't wait to see this plant trail. I think it will look really splendid. If any of you guys have this plant already, let me know if you've got any good care tips for it. You all know how much I love my calatheas, so of course I have to feature at least one calathea in my top 10. So today, I have the Calathea Musaica. I find this one of the easiest Calatheas to take care of. This guy had thrips over the summer. Well, a lot of my plants had thrips over the summer and it seemed to be the most resilient. The leaves are quite kind of thick and firm compared to the other Calatheas. I find that a lot of the Calatheas are quite fragile this guy has grown so much, it's absolutely massive now. I just love the pattern on the leaves. This plant is living in medium light and seems to be thriving. Next up is the Serapedia woodii variegata. I'm usually really rubbish with anything that's slightly succulent, but this one, seems to be doing really well. I think I've had it a few months now. It's still really full and bushy. This is a bright west facing window that gets a bit of sun in the afternoon. The hearts feel slightly squishy, which means it needs watering. It's been quite thirsty actually. Compared to my other string of hearts, the non-variegated one, this one seems to want watering a lot more often. It's also been flowering. I think there's still a few. Yeah, there was loads of flowers all over it. Oh, there's one. The back of the leaves have been turning this lovely pink colour and that's from getting lots of sun. So the more sun you expose it to, apparently the more pink you will get on the back of the leaf. Next on my list is the gorgeous Philodendron Pink Princess, one of my all time favorite plants. I've wanted this plant for so long. I wanted it for about a year before I actually ended up getting one. This isn't the most variegated one you've ever seen. This is pretty much the only variegation on it at the moment, apart from tiny, tiny little flecks of variegation. But it has actually surprised me and it's been quite quick at growing new leaves. I thought that these were meant to be really slow growing. So I think since I've had it, it's grown three new leaves. This one is slightly crispy on the end because I treated it with neem oil which is why the leaves look a bit shiny. But I wouldn't recommend treating brand new leaves because they're still a bit sensitive and it makes them a bit more light sensitive. This is the newest leaf unfurling here. And I can't really see much pink on it apart from a tiny, tiny dot down the bottom. But I suppose I won't know until it unfurls. I keep taking it in the bathroom. When I have a bath, I take it in with me <laughs> so that it gets um, really high humidity because that helps with the unfurling of the new leaves. So I really can't wait to see what the new leaf looks like. You never know though, the next one that pops out could be all pink. You just never know with these plants. But 
yeah, definitely one of my favourites. I think it still has quite a small root system, so when I water it, I water just a tiny bit each time. And I even noticed down here, I think there's a little shoot growing off the side of it, which is quite cool. Next on my list is the Alocasia cupria, also known as Red Secret. There are really no words to describe how stunning this plant is and how bizarre it is. It kind of looks like an alien plant. So pretty. It looks metallic when the leaves first unfurl. This is a beautiful new leaf here. This was a new leaf, but I don't know what happened here. It looks a bit weird. I'm not quite sure. <laughs> Bizarre. This one looks perfect. I find it does grow a little bit strange. Sometimes the leaves kind of are looking down the way or they're just kind of, it looks a bit wild. Maybe I should stake it or tie it together or something. So I currently have this plant in medium to bright indirect light and it seems to be happy. As I said before, I had it on my kitchen window and the light I think was just too bright for it and it was growing really strange. Well, I know it's still growing a bit strange, but it's weird because it looks droopy, but the stems are really firm, so you can't even kind of bend them back and tie them or anything. It's really odd. The leaves will look different colours in different lighting. It actually looks different on the camera to what I can see in real life. It's much more purple and it looks more green and kind of dull on the camera, which is a bit annoying. But yeah, in real life, it's a really bright, metallic, gorgeous purple colour. Last but not least, we have the Syngonium Pink Splash. Really pretty. When the leaves first come out, it's a bright pink colour and then it kind of dulls down as they age. And the variegation on this has just been unreal. I always get really excited when there's a new leaf coming just because every leaf is so different. I think I had one before that had half, yeah, it was this one. So these, these two leaves are dying off now, but you can still see where the variegation was. These are really easy to care for. They can thrive in medium to bright indirect light. Syngoniums are generally fast growing and also really easy to propagate. They root really well in water and they can even live in water for quite some time. I hope you guys enjoyed me showing you my favourite houseplants at the moment. I'm sure next month I'll have a completely different list, but that's just how it is. And I am planning to get some more plants that are on my wish list very soon. So that is super exciting. Take care everyone. I'll see you all soon in my next video. Bye.